I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we are going for a drive. We've got the Hyundai Elantra N and the Hyundai Kona N and we're going to find out which one's faster, the differences between both, and if one is much more fun than the other. Starting with the horsepower and torque. Both of these have 276 horsepower and 289 pound-feet of torque from a 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder and that Kona N has a DCT which gives it 286 horsepower in overboost mode. The N grin shift button, what do you have in that Elantra instead? I have a red button that says rev, which turns on or off my rev matching because I have a manual. Well, that must be nice. It is, I just used it. And in eco mode, I'll just click NGS. And I'm gone. So we went to Toronto Motorsports Park to drag race these to see which one is faster. Now the Elantra N is manual, so everyone knows manual transmissions aren't exactly as fast as dual clutch transmissions. And we actually proved that to be true at the track. The Elantra had such a hard time hooking up. It has the nastiest launch ever because it is complete wheel hop the entire time. Yes, and then this Kona N, even though it's an SUV, is only front wheel drive, where the Kona N line that we drove previously was all wheel drive. This thing had a fantastic launch every single time. Both have launch control. You can set them both through the infotainments, and the Kona N won every single time from a launch. So then we wanted to test a roll race. So what happened there was the Elantra started to pull away from the Kona, barely. But then the Kona pulled its little secret out, the NGS button. When we're dead even, Yuri hit the NGS button and then started to pull on me with that 10 extra horsepower. Yeah, it's almost like a NOS button from Fast and Furious. Like le legitimately, if you're racing against an Elantra and manual. <laughs> yeah, so taking us back into the real world where we are on the road, Yuri, do you feel a difference when you press that NGS button versus not pressing it when you're already in end mode? Not really, but it obviously does make a difference when you're doing a test. And then we quickly went off the drag strip onto the road course, hit up Continental Corner. They did feel slightly different through Continental Corner, and I think that's due to the tires. Yeah, they are different performance tires on each of these cars, but what would be the Continental recommended tire for both of these? The Extreme Contact Sport. But we'll find out the actual handling, handling assessment through Cliché Corner a little bit later, because that's all that really matters. There's N for Namiang and Nürburgring. When we design a car company, it's going to be C for Cliché Corner. That's right. Does anybody have C as a cool letter right now for a car? Uh, I don't think so. Copyright right now, C. Done. No, no, C63 doesn't count because that's, yeah, no, I think. No, that's that's a model designation. Yo, C, C, that's us. You can't take that. Our symbol is just going to be a little squiggle of three turns. For the Jakuri, that's our car company. So since we have both of these at the exact same time, let's get into all the little minute differences between these two. Starting with, you said you have the NGS button, mine says rev. We do both have N buttons on the steering wheels, but they do slightly different things in both. And then the Kona cannot come in a manual where the Elantra N can come in manual and DCT. And in terms of those buttons doing different things, I only have three regular drive modes and then I also have my N and N custom modes, whereas you actually have some off-road modes. Yeah, because if you need to get to your millennial cottage and you need a little bit more ground clearance, we've got like an inch and a half more in the Kona N. Yeah, so uh, theoretically you can get to your theoretical cottage because I don't think anyone our age actually owns cottages. It's just like parents of friends and parents that own cottages. So like, do you really need the Kona N at the end of the day? Like, I don't really know. Comment below if you were born in the 80s or 90s in, and you live in Toronto and you have a cottage of your own. <laughs> yeah, definitely let us know. And then let us know what business decisions led you to actually have a cottage. So the next thing, pumped in audio. I don't have any in the Kona N. I'm going to downshift and... Nothing, but a few backfires that you could hear from outside. And in the Elantra N, I actually have a lot of different pumped in audio. I can actually customize with personal settings for pumped in audio where I can actually use this graph to then change how much wine, bass, and throat I have. But I'm just gonna show the differences of the preset modes, so starting with sporty. Okay, and now high performance. And 
now TCR. And I think TCR is the one that makes the biggest difference and it kind of sounds like a TCR car, at least what I imagine it to be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they made the sound sound like straight cut gears when you're off the throttle. That's when you hear it the most. I really like it and I like how customizable it is. I'm not sure if I would have that on every single day, but maybe on a racetrack when you have a helmet on, it probably helps. And in case you didn't know, Hyundai actually races these in the TCR series. Shout out Mark Wilkins. Mark, let us know if this car sounds exactly like your TCR car. Yeah, and if you wanna see some videos of him teaching us how to go fast around a track in a Veloster N, there's uh, links in that below. But I really like how customizable this car is. There's so many settings for both of these when you're in end mode. You can actually customize your exhaust sound so you can go to Sport Plus, which gives you those burbles and cracks, which actually sound kind of cool, but we're also both getting really tired of. So you can dial that back into Sport, which kind of sounds the same, but then removes the crackles and pops. And when you're just rolling around, if you're revving using neutral or park, the Elantra N can rev a little bit closer to Redline and fully smack it where the Kona N is just a little bit less and you do get more backfires all the time in the Elantra end, so I guess we should probably... Take a listen from the outside. And back to the inside, clutch in. Oh, neutral. I'm stuck at four and a half thousand. Pathetic. And I can go all the way to red line, basically. And then the rest of the end stuff is pretty much exactly the same. So much customization, which is like the coolest part of both of these. Yeah, and I even have rev matching where I can not only customize on off, there's three different levels of rev matching in here, which is really cool. And then I can then preset my level there and then I can use my big red rev button to then enable or disable that custom one. Jacob, want to see something disappointing? What's that? Put that into eco mode. Okay, uh, one second. Eco push rev match ah uh, doesn't let you do it in that mode which kind of sucks but you know what sucks about the Kona is this head-up display which you don't have in the Elantra it's one of those little panels that sticks up the graphics in it are pretty cool and vibrant but I just don't like the little panel style head-up displays yeah I they do nothing for me they're actually useless for me because I'm too tall for them and I just end up looking at the hood so whatever no points lost on the Elantra for not having one the Elantra N has a sunroof where the Kona N has none, which kind of sucks because I like my sunroof, so I'm in this right now. And in the Elantra N, I have the extra special N seats, which are very well bolstered and the N's light up, which yours actually don't, but they're also very well bolstered. Yeah, very well bolstered for an SUV, but they're powered. But I got no memory seats where the ones in the Elantra N are manual adjustment because lightness for race car. Speaking of lightness, I guess they deleted the cooled part, so there's only heated seats in here and a heated steering wheel, but the climate controls are all really easy to use. Same in this one, and then both of the infotainments. Nice, good Hyundai Kia Genesis infotainments with volume knob, tuning knob, hard buttons. We got a star button so we can go to our Apple CarPlay projection, and then we both have Sirius XM. We can both rewind. And here at the Straight Pipes, we've got a special Sirius XM offer for you for three free months. If you're in Canada, click this link put in your VIN number, put in your information, and you can get three free months without a credit card. And if you're in the United States, use the .com link and look for the details there. And if your car doesn't have SiriusXM, you can still get that offer and listen through the app. Now moving on to the gauge clusters, the gauge cluster in the Elantra N is just higher res and it looks a little bit bigger. I really prefer this one. I feel like they're both the same, but when we switch, I'll double confirm but all the gauge modes and customization looks like it's the same in both. I really liked how you get the little fire ring when you go to N. And none of the animations are laggy because we complained to Hyundai a while ago, but you've got this awesome feature in the Elantra N where it's a sticker on the left. Yes, this thing that does nothing that was a giant drive mode button in the Elantra N line. More cool things. We both have manual handbrakes and in the marketing material, they both rip them all the time. So feel free to rip handbrakes in your Elantra N that you buy brand new from tsp.truecar.com. Or you can also do that in the Kona N if that's what you fancy, because apparently a lot of people buy Konas. So then how about back seat room? The Elantra has tons of room back there for myself at six foot one and a half sitting behind myself. And I don't have quite as much room in the back of the Kona N. My knees just bash into the back of that seat. And at five foot eight, fit great in both behind myself. No issues at all. But the back seat in the Kona N, it is a split fold where in the Elantra, it all folds down. And if you look through the trunk, even though the Elantra has more room, it's got some cool reinforcement bars there. 
Yeah, there's some extra bracing for some structural rigidity in the back of the Elantra and it looks cool because it's red. And fun fact, that Kona N has one cubic foot less space than the Veloster N, which is a hatchback as well. And that's supposed to be an SUV. Well, I mean, your theory behind it all is that they, they took a hatchback, lifted it to make it an SUV, and then lowered it to make it an N. <laughs> yeah, so I'm keeping my personal opinion out of this, but I really don't think that Kona N should exist. However, it does drive great, and I actually enjoy my time in it, but it just actually makes no logical sense because it's, no. it's an SUV that they lifted to make back down and then to make sporty again. It's, you already have the it Veloster. Makes, just add another door. It, it makes perfect sense to sell more units because SUVs are hot, and that's how companies make money, so that then they can make cool cars that don't make as much money. Look at Porsche. That's why I'm keeping my personal opinions out of this. From a business standpoint, I know 1,000% why they did that and why it's selling. So before we get to cliche corner, let's go over the train tracks in end mode and talk about the daily driving comfort and then switch it to the soft mode and see how much nicer it is in both of these. The Veloster N had really stiff suspension and it did carry over to both of these. However, I find the Elantra to be slightly more comfortable in full end mode and even the least end mode. But they're both pretty livable in the least end mode, which is kind of surprising. Yeah, I think both of these are actually slightly more livable than the Veloster N in full end mode as well. I'd say borderline if you're throwing like a one-year-old in the back, like, you know, how, how, how much do you want your kid to rattle around back there? Like, it's just borderline pass. Yeah, I would agree. They're not even close to a Civic Type R where the Civic Type R's comfort is like really comfortable and then R is really R. I think Civic Type R is still the benchmark. All right, Jacob, hit the train tracks at 55. Shigiri schwa. Stiff. I mean, that wasn't even the worst in the Kona. going back through the train tracks in eco mode. A little better. I'm gonna be honest, didn't notice too much of a difference in that exact scenario. I'm just gonna go into full end mode and do a launch control, which I have to activate through the infotainment. Yeah, same here, but please don't break that car before I get to drive it. How can I break this car if I'm in full launch control? Oh, oh, that's how. Oh, the wheel hop is so bad in this. That made me throw up in my mouth, so Kona and launch. Good amount of torque steer, no guh 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 guh. Absolute launch control perfection. Yeah, the launch control in the manual is just, it's so bad. Like, yes, I have to modulate it. I have to be very careful, but if I just mat it and then just kind of side flip the clutch, it does not work. Yeah, let's just not launch front wheel drive cars because it's just, it's just not that cool. No, it's really not. <laughs> so going through cliche corner, I'm actually gonna go into end custom and dial my suspension all the way to soft. And I'm going full end mode. I am trusting the engineers over in Korea. And uh, yeah, yeah, they, I can feel the LSD like pulling me through like surprisingly quick through here. Yeah, we both have an ELSD, which you can customize through the infotainment. There's two different modes for it and it actually makes a really big difference in both the modes. All right, I assume the Elantra will be able to catch up and keep up with me very easily. So let's... Oh, no problem. It does want to kind of rotate and then want the back end to come around a little bit more than that Kona does. This is actually one of like the most fun cars I've driven through here, and it's a friggin' crossover. Yeah, uh, both of these cars rip really hard, and I'm glad I dialed the suspension back for that bump. And I felt pretty good for all that in end mode, so let's switch them up and go back. Dual clutch launch. Oh, so much better million times better, I would say. I dropped the launch revs down, but RIP ELSD. I am disappointed. And then the first thing I notice after that launch is that my elbow hits the armrest in the Elantra N. I hate how all Hyundais have a raised armrest. No other car that makes manual transmissions does that, except for Hyundai and Kia and Genesis. Ha, and I didn't have that problem at all because my hand position is on top of the shifter. Yeah, yeah, do not like. 
And in this one, I'm missing a third pedal, which, man, that just feels so weird to me, right? Okay, into cliche corner. I turned rev matching off. I'm going to good heel toe down and great. Oh, paddles. This feels great. Oh, this Kona rips. I feel like this grips a little bit more. Yeah, it does. This thing, I feel like I'm 40 feet in the air and I feel like I have to earn it. And then I can get a little bit of a lift off oversteer if I want in this one too. <laughs> yeah, they both really turn in great. I almost feel like the Kona has better turn in for some reason. I, I feel like the Elantra is better for handling. I think the Elantra is better overall, but I think the turn in is better on the Kona. Yeah, if I, if I had to track day, I would go Elantra for sure with the manual rev match on. It would just be like such a pleasure. But if I had to go to the track after driving my kid around all week in the Kona N, I'd still have a lot of fun, especially at the drag strip compared to this, which would suck at the drag strip. And through there, I couldn't really feel the weight difference of this Kona N. The Kona N does weigh more, about 155 pounds more than that Elantra N. But if you did get that Elantra N in DCT, then the difference is pretty much negligible. And did, it, did you notice the height difference in the Kona N? Like, not that much. Oh, that's the first thing I noticed. It's a huge difference. I feel like I'm 40 feet in the air. No, but I mean, like, handling-wise, did it really affect how well it drove? Like, not really. Not really. Like, shockingly, not really. It's just the position of my head. I feel like I'm just too tall. And to go back to what I mentioned earlier, I feel like both gauge screens are the same resolution. Do you double confirm me? I triple confirm that I may have gotten that wrong and they look the same. Maybe I was just swayed by the fact that the Elantra screens are attached to each other rather than these separate screens. And then this manual transmission in the Hyundai, like as a manual transmission, fantastic, no complaints. That manual is really good in the Elantra, no issues. The clutch is really soft. You can daily drive that, no problem. You can daily drive this DCT even easier just because it's easy mode. Just put in regular drive and there you go. But it does shift really quickly and it's an eight speed. And these shift lights were amazing going through Cliche Corner. And then in the DCT, if you have traction all the way off, after second gear, it won't automatically upshift, which is awesome. As long as you put the shifter into manual M mode. And now that I'm in the Kona N with its DCT, it actually has three crazy features for its DCT system, starting with NGS, which is the 10 extra horsepower boost. And then we have N power shift, which activates at 90% throttle to give you a faster boost. So basically it, it kind of spools the turbo in between shifts and kind of gives you a kick in the back. And finally we have NTS, which is N track sense. So apparently if you're doing some track like driving, it'll start to downshift in the corners for you. So it kind of eliminates manual mode for you. All right, I'm gonna go over the train tracks in the Elantra in N mode. And this will be the final judge of which one's stiffer. I will do the same in full end mode in the Kona. Hmm, this felt stiffer. I can't tell, <laughs> save to me. Okay, this felt stiffer to me and generally driving these every day, I do feel like the Elantra is the softer one between these, so I actually prefer the suspension in that one. And both of these being front wheel drive, I think this Kona should have been all wheel drive. It torque steers like crazy. Yes, it would have added a significant cost and then put it into Golf R realm of price, but I think it's a missed opportunity between these two. Well, three, because the Veloster N as well. I feel like they're just feeling out the waters right now, so I'm giving it a pass. But unless they'd have to probably like engineer a whole new all-wheel drive system that absolutely rips compared to like H-Track. Do you think H-Track could handle all of this? I don't know, Yuri. H-Track is just a badge to me. Okay, and now one of the more controversial subjective things that anyone picking between either of these will have to decide. Looks-wise, Starting with the front ends, which front end looks better? I think the Kona N front end looks significantly better than the Elantra N front end. There's just too much black in that Elantra N. And I think that's the coolest part of the Elantra N, but once you throw a front license plate in there, it might throw it off a little bit, but I, I, I'm tied on the looks as well on both of these. I, I think they look awesome from the front. Moving around to the side, they both have really cool wheels, but I do prefer the ones on the Kona N. Uh, I will also give them both a tie because they are so similar but also so good. And finally the back end, the Elantra just has a bunch of crazy shapes. The taillights I think look a lot cooler because they go all the way across. Yeah, the Elantra looks cooler because it's got that wing even though the Kona has some wing to it too. Both dual exhausts look awesome. I, I, I'm going to give them both a tie as well. But where I'm not going to give it a tie is the side angle. I think the Elantra body line, especially in this blue color, is really accentuated when the light hits it right. And I just love these triangles. 
And Yuri, remember when the Kona first came out and I made a joke about the Conan? Well, now it exists. This is the actual Conan. And the funniest part is they had to move the N badge way over on the hatch so that nobody could call it the Conan. But if you look at the Elantra, the N badge is a lot closer to the Elantra. Wait, when you said that back then, I'm like, yeah, okay, good one. Like, good joke, Jacob. It's never going to happen. Boy, was I wrong. I was wrong, too. It was just a joke. And I know I said that I preferred a lot of individual things on the Kona N, but overall, looks-wise, I love that Elantra N, and I didn't really like the Elantra because of all the triangles, but when you get it in its N, the final mode, with the wing, all the triangles work in this really aggressive thing, so I definitely picked the Elantra N for looks. And the color of that Kona N is still kind of bluish. I feel like it's still an N color, and it looks great with the red at the bottom, especially on both of these. But overall, looks, I think I would pick the Elantra, I think. But I mean like a lowered Kona N, and then if it came with a manual transmission, like that would actually be like pretty crazy. Yeah, but that's so ridiculous because yes, this doesn't even exist with a six speed, and this is a stupid hot hatch SUV thing that's turned into a hot hatch that's still an SUV. Like, I just don't understand this car personally at all. It's the money. Well, the money's even more for this one. You can literally buy that car for a family car, and your spouse may not know that it's fast and track ready. That's how cool of a car it actually is. So before we get to the price, a couple of the usual tests, uh, visor test, Yuri. Three, two, one. Full and pass. The passenger one. Ah, good call. Also passes. Also pass. That Veloster N got us that one time. And then the cup holders, they are very deep, would not pass a small cup in the Elantra unless you put it into this little cup holder attachment and then a small cup fits just fine. And the Kona doesn't have anything crazy. They just have normal cup holders and the both of them fit just fine. So with all that out of the way, I think it's time we get to the price. The Elantra N is the value here at $37,199. Canadian. And the Kona N is $39,999. And what's cool is there aren't really any options beside colors on the N models. Yeah, you just pay an extra 200 bucks for whatever color you want. And I would definitely get that Elantra in that N blue because I love how that car looks. I think both of these are just so amazing in general, like that fact that they exist, how good they both are, there's pretty much nothing wrong with either of those. But if it was me and I had to pick an N car, I'm going Veloster, baby. Oh, really? I, I, I just love the looks of the Veloster. I think it's so much cooler, but there's nothing wrong with any of these in case you like sedans or SUVs more. Hang on a second. Didn't you say that you hated the Veloster and you couldn't deal with it because of the baby seat and the three doorness? Yeah, this is a hypothetical, I don't have a kid and it doesn't matter, like whichever car. Ah, oh, I see, all right. If I wanted an N car and I have a normal car for family stuff, I would go Veloster. So since rules don't matter, uh, I'm gonna go i30N between all the N models. That's also fair. I'm, I'm gonna go uh, Kia Stinger N. That doesn't even exist. I at least picked a model that exists somewhere else. I'm gonna use Mark Wilkins TCR car. Beat that. I can't actually. Nobody can because he's so good at racing. 